Acts chapter 4, and looking in verse 8, this is after uh, a man who is uh, lame is healed. And in verse 8, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, These are people who are trying to find out who it is that healed this man. It says, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom you, who God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is an intertwining and intermingling between your testimony and the gospel. Your testimony and the gospel. It's an intermingling between the two. Jesus said, I come to set the captive free. Everybody hearing this? There's an intermingling between your story and the gospel, which is why the testimony of Jesus becomes a spirit of prophecy. I want to introduce some, somebody to you who's going to tell you what my uh, daughter calls the B-side. <laughs> the B-side of what people go through. Sometimes we just read that uh, a person was hurt and then they were healed and blessed the name of the Lord. But sometimes we don't know about what happens in the middle of that. We find out that a person is hurt and then they get more hurt and then they have to navigate that hurt. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever had to navigate pain? navigate friendships and then things go left and then things go right and how how is it if I'm in the middle of that how do I get to the light on the other side <laughs> how do I get there well Miss Constance Melton is going to help us with that a little bit amen put your hands together for Miss Constance Amen. Come on, keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. The spirit of prophecy is walking up here right now. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Miss Council, I'm asking you to sit right there. Amen. Now I'm going to say this for everybody who's looking for me to start yelling and running all around the stage. That's not what this is about today. So if you need that to get to another place, then after you leave here, you're going to have to find another service. Because we're following uh, what the Holy Ghost is wanting us to do today. Amen? So I want you to listen intently and understand because as we're talking, you're going to hear uh, some things. Well, you're definitely going to hear some things about Miss Constance here. But you're also going to understand some things about how. Amen? Sometimes it's the how, how that, that's going to uh, really help us. If I just knew how, if I just knew how this, this works, amen? Amen. So let's pray. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your spirit, your anointing, your, your power, Lord, your majesty, your presence in this room, Lord. Do a work in us that only you can do, Lord. Be God for us and we'll be your people. Lord, you said in your word that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, as we're hearing this testimony, Lord, that this testimony becomes prophecy to us. Speak to us about our future, Lord. Speak to us about what's going on with us right now. Open up our eyes that we can understand and see the hand, your hand on our lives, your hand in our situation, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for myself. I thank you, Lord, for Miss Constance, Lord, that you're going to bless us and use us, Lord, to your will to minister to your people. We count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
That's what I'm talking about. You know, Curtis is one of the Gideon's 300. You know that, right? So he laid on that stage and just sacrificed his body. I, look, if you were listening, I just told you something just now. All right, Miss Constance, how you doing today? <laughs> it's on, but you see how I got it so close to my face? <laughs> yeah. Now, can you hear her okay? All right, all right. So now uh, I'm going to ask you a, a bunch of questions. And there's some places I'm going to stop along the way, and uh, you're going to get out a, a good amount of your testimony, and some of it maybe not, and you know, but I, I don't doubt that we'll have some people who you know, get a hold of you in different places in the church and ask you, now, what about uh, this, right? You'll be willing to talk to them a little bit, I would uh, assume. But let me ask you this. Where are you, where are you from? Well, I was born in a little town called Stony Point, North Carolina, and my parents were James and LeGrant Stewart. Is that Stormy Point? Stony Point. Stony. S -O -N. Anybody else from Storny Point? <laughs> you know where it is. Yeah. All it's, right. It's, it's about eight miles on the outside of Statesville, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. On the outside of Statesville. Yeah. Yell out your city. Statesville. You're from Statesville. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So she knows where I'm from. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. How long have you been living for Jesus? Well, let me tell you this. Okay. I got, I, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior um, in 1988, February the 3rd, 1988. Mm -hmm. That's, but living for Jesus, I say the last 20 years I've been living for Jesus. Okay. Okay. Why would you, why, why do you make that distinction? Because um, I got saved and I had an addiction problem from childhood, mm -hmm. from, you know, substance abuse. And I got saved, and I couldn't deal with the frustration of life. It was good. Once I met Jesus, my life was good. And um, I had a failed marriage when mm -hmm. I, after I got saved. I got married, I got saved, and my marriage failed. Um, um, and I just, I just gave up. Mm -hmm. I just gave up. And um, I, I, I backslid. Mm -hmm. I backslid, and I started using drugs again. And my life was a living hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put it that way. So, so what I'm hearing uh, very distinctly is that you were saved, mm -hmm. and then you backslid. Mm -hmm. But then you're telling me that God picked you up again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody want to put your hands oh, together yeah. for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. So... You came to church, you gave your life, and then you went your own God way. With the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, me you know there's some that people God changed me. You know there's some people filled with the Holy Ghost and happy to be mean at the same uh -huh. time. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're saying is that God didn't throw you away. Were there any family members who threw you away? But God didn't. Sexually violated, okay. Sexually violated um, between the age of five, and it happened until until I was about nine years old. Um, and I never told that to a living soul um, until, you know, I got help with my substance abuse. But I carried that weight for a very long time. And after what happened to me as a child. You know, you get used to that, and then you become promiscuous. And so it's just like, it was just the pain of it all. And it just kept mounting and mounting and mounting. I can remember as a child chewing up all the baby aspirin. You know, that was, that was my first uh, experience with, with drugs. You know, just going in the medicine cabinet, and my mother can't, couldn't figure out what happened to all the baby aspirin. But it started then, and um, 
I went through a life of just pain and, and carrying secrets, you know, secrets. And then, you know, it just, life just got to a point where it was just overwhelming, you know. Um, I, I, I was, I put myself in a position for statutory rape at the age of 14. Um, never told a soul that my baby's father, sperm donor, uh, raped me because I was afraid of what my father would do to him. I never told on the people that did what they did to me because I was afraid of what my father would do to them. So I carried that all of my adult life, mm -hmm. all of my adult life, mm -hmm. you know. And I got saved, and I just thought that, you know, you always say Disney messed us up. Well, I believe in magic, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought when I got saved that everything was just going to go away, mm -hmm. you know. And I thought everything was going to go all right. I never dreamed that my marriage was going to fail, that the things that happened in my marriage was going to happen. I never thought that I would do another line of cocaine ever in my life after I got saved. But that didn't work. It did not work. Now, now let's talk about let's talk about this. You you, you talk about these secrets, mm -hmm. right? And I would imagine that those secrets were heavy. Yes. So, w what was the the? How hard was it to keep so many secrets? I just ran, mm -hmm. and I just kept running to destruction. You know, um, like I said, I was I was raped. Statutory rape, I put myself in that position. I, I have to take responsibility for, for myself, uh, but no means no, irregardless. Um, and uh, I had a child by the time I was 15. I was still a child myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a very domineering mother, and I want to say this. My parents did the best they could do. I had two parents that were good people that loved us, but they gave us what they had to give. Uh, my father was an alcoholic. Um, my mother was a very religious woman, very domineering. So, you know, everything looked good on the outside, but it was a lot of, can I say this, hell in our house. And we grew up with that, my brother and myself. I have a, I have a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And it was just heavy. It was just heavy. And I found myself running. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had a child at 15. Um, I always, my mother was big on education, so I tried to go to summer school. I did what I could do, but I just couldn't take it anymore. So I, I hung, I've always hung around with older people. So I went to a gospel singing and I met a man and he, we met and I married him mm -hmm. at 16. And that's how I got to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And boy, was that one big mistake because I was raised around pimps, hustlers, drug users. I mean, it was just a life that I never dreamed that I would step into, mm -hmm. but I did. And mm -hmm. my, I took my child with me. And that was another living hell for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, the drug abuse increased even more with that exposure. Let me tell you something about talking to Miss Constance. You don't have to warm this up. <laughs> You jump right into the, the center of it. And so mm -hmm. then for anybody who's behind, I'm going to need you to go ahead and catch up now. All right? Because we just started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Now, I know that all of us don't necessarily, uh, there's some of us who are facing what, have faced what you're talking about, mm -hmm. but not all of us have faced what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I is there a significant difference between the person who is, uh, and I know, I know what the answer to this may be, but is there how, how significant is the difference between the person who is just carrying uh, lies, lies that they told to protect themselves, mm -hmm. and a person who is uh, carrying hurts in a way to try to protect other people? I think it's still the same. Mm -hmm. You know, because for me, it happened from all types of directions. You know what I'm saying? I want to say this about myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was all that. I was always that little kid. Have you ever met a child that just seemed wise beyond their years, and you just like? And I was that kid, and and I would have dreams. Um, 
And I would try to tell my mother my dreams. And I would tell her dreams, and they would come true. And she stifled that in me because it, it scared her. So I've always been that kid to, to have. And when he was talking about uh, God knowing us from the womb, that resonates with me, and it always has. I always knew that there was a God, and I always knew that there was something in me mm -hmm. that drew me to his word. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember my first scripture mm -hmm. that I ever learned, and it wasn't, it's just I heard it, mm -hmm. and I could remember it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And I can remember s repeating that when I was being violated. Mm -hmm. I could remember repeating the Lord's prayer um, once I learned that. So God's word has always been with me, and God has always been with me. But I, I just didn't know how to process the spiritual, the natural. I just didn't know what mm -hmm. to do with it all. Mm -hmm. And my brother and I, it was substance abuse. I mean, we were fat little kids. We mm -hmm. ate our, we ate our emotions. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, and that was just a, a symptom of what was really going on. And it was fear. It was pain. It was shame. Mm -hmm. You know, all that um, is what I carried around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ms. Goss, you stand on the other side of this. Yes. Confident. Yes. If you didn't say all this, <laughs> well, m most of these people would have no idea how, how, I know this is a short question, but it needs a longer answer. Mm -hmm. How do you go from that to where you are now? Okay. After I backslid and I started back using cocaine and my marriage had ended, uh, my business had failed, it was just like my world had crumbled around me. And I didn't, I, I knew when I got saved and I used drugs, I knew that I couldn't continue to live. It was just like my conscience had come alive. You know, I could no longer consciously do what I used to do. And that really bothered me. I guess, you know, I grieved the Holy Spirit so bad. Mm -hmm. And I, I attempted to commit suicide. I really did. And I mean, it's... Oh, Amen. By the grace of God that I'm sitting here on this stage talking and giving this testimony today because when I tell you how from my being on the inside from every fiber of my being I wanted to die and I told God I said God if I have to continue to live this way just take me just take me because I can't do this anymore. I'm saved. It's not supposed to be like that. And, and I attempted it. And there was a series of events that I was rescued. God showed up and just saved me. And, and I remember waking up in that ambulance for a brief minute. And I was so angry with God that I wasn't I was still in this earth. I was just screaming, and the attendant said to me, he says, but God is not through with you. He's got something for you to do. And I, I remember going back out. And uh, when I woke up again on the floor that they put you on when you try to commit suicide, I did the same thing. I remember just screaming and yelling at God, you know. And the, and the lady that was attending to me said the exact same thing that the ambulance attendant had said to me. And that started the new beginning of my life. God placing those people to speak that word over me mm -hmm. and giving me that confidence that I needed to do, to take the next step yeah. that I needed to take. Yeah. So wh what I'm hearing is that it, it sounds like you had to get to your lowest point. The dark of the dark <laughs> the dark of this the dark. this statement here is the reason why we're here right now we're going to we're going to go into that a little bit the the how how deep the dark can can get but now what do you say to people who it seems like their life is falling apart 
-hmm. and they and they and they're looking and they're looking for God to fix it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where you know in your situation, your life was falling apart, mm -hmm. but it seemed like it had to fall apart some more, mm -hmm. right? What would you say to those those folks? I would say, don't give up on God. Number one, number two. There was three things that I learned when I went to treatment, and that was the importance of being honest, mm. open-minded, and having the willingness to change. Right, okay, let's, let's talk about that one more time. These three things are, one more, one more time. Honest, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. The willing, you gotta get honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. God already knows. Okay, God already knows. He's trying to help you. That's why he's shining that light on it. Mm -hmm. Because when it's falling apart, yeah. you know, I knew before it fell apart, it was falling apart. Yeah. I just was not willing. I just was not willing. And part of me didn't understand mm -hmm. the things that I learned about myself when I went to treatment. So, you you know? said, so you're saying that God shot, was shining a light on it. See, the scripture says it uh, like this, that, that uh, that men hate the light mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's exposing their evil deeds. Right, right. But you said you got to if you're going to walk in deliverance, mm -hmm. you have to be honest, honest, open-minded, and willing. Why open-minded? Because you have to be open-minded to not be so afraid of change. You have to open up your mind to examine what this really is and what this really means and how much this lifestyle is costing you. I look at my family. I am 63 years old. I have a 47-year-old daughter. I have four grandchildren. My oldest grandchild is 32 years old. I have 12 great-grandchildren at 63. That's weighty. That's a lot you know, for a woman my age. But I thank God that I'm here. And I have my story to share with not only them, but other people. I'm not the only woman who has gone through this at my age. You know, and, and so I know that God saved me. He reached down and but he- But the enemy will make you feel like you're alone. Yeah, and he did that. Mm -hmm. He shrouded me with shame and guilt. Those were the two, my two biggest enemies, that shame and that guilt, even after I got saved. You know, I, after I got saved and after I backslid, you know, he, he had even tricked me into not reading this Bible because I could open that Bible and get so convicted, I didn't realize that that was the Holy Spirit at the time because I wasn't mature mm -hmm. in Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But God sent me in a different direction and put me in what I call my other church, and that was Narcotics Anonymous, mm -hmm. you know. And when I started reading those 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous, I went and got my Bible, and I could find every scripture for every one of those steps because I was full of the Word. I came up in a Word church mm -hmm. where they taught the Word, you know, and I had a lot of Word in me, you know, and... So when I got the Narcotics Anonymous and I saw the principles that were behind the steps, that was my new church. Mm -hmm. And I could go in there and I could share my heart out. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the first, when I went, when I got help and had a counselor, that was the first human being that I ever told about my being violated as a child, about the rape, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about my anger and my distrust in my family. You know, I didn't have the best relationship with my mother early on, mm -hmm. but that's a part of the new part. You know? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask, okay, so then you, you said that, that uh, the N.A. became your new church, mm -hmm. right? And we're, at the time, were you still going to church? Well, at first, I, I no, not at first, because, you know, the way this worked, let me, let me back up. The way this worked, okay, I, I, I tried to commit suicide after that. You know, you got to go to mental health. Mm -hmm. That's a given because you're crazy. Mm -hmm. If you try to kill yourself, that's how they classify it. And you are. Uh, something's really wrong. Yeah. Something's really, really yeah. wrong. Now, now, listen. That's a desperate place. Now, and I, people I'll, let, me, let me say this because don't lose your thought. In church, I've, I've noticed something. And allow me to be your pastor for two seconds. When, when something is really deep and true, 
we try to laugh through it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't settle. Mm -hmm. You're created in the image of God, yes. in his likeness. Mm -hmm. When a person decides to destroy that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to consider what's really being destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, mm -hmm. God can get right in the middle mm -hmm. of that and still do mm -hmm. uh, his work for his, his glory. Mm -hmm. But now we got to understand that because I, I was... Don't lose your thought now. We were in, we were in Bible study. <laughs> we were in Bible study, and we were talking about this. A person decides to take their life with a gun in their bedroom, and we say, that's terrible, mm -hmm. and I agree. Mm -hmm. Another person, now, again, I'm not being facetious. Another person decides to eat Price's chicken coop, Bojangles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all starch, mm -hmm. all fast food, mm -hmm. day after day after day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. high blood pressure, mm -hmm. heart disease, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. The first person just did it quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Another person decides to fill their lungs with smoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another person decides to fill their mind with junk. Mm -hmm. We couldn't think that we're better than the person who did it with a gun. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Look at your neighbor and say, this is church, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's church. We're still having church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess up Bojangles stop right now. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm telling you is, is this. If you're still the temple of God, mm -hmm. could you imagine walking in here? Mm -hmm. Walking in here. And it smelled like Bojangles mm. everywhere. Mm. And you were trying to worship through that. Mm. And on the screen was pornography. Mm. Mm. I'll stand up for this. Part. Okay. And on the screen was pornography. Smell of Bojangles in here. And then, yeah, it's not the glory clown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cigarette smoke here, and the music was club music. Mm -hmm. And then, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are supposed to come in mm -hmm. and deliver you from your choices. Mm -hmm. But we're the temple. Yes. Yes. We can't turn up our nose at the person mm -hmm. who does it quick, and we're doing it slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, something's got to change. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. The Holy Ghost is in you, and you watching pornography. You show them the Holy Ghost pornography. Something's got to change. Amen? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> it's okay because that's, that's part of the peace. You mm -hmm. know, I was saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that was bothering me is because I was doing all that stuff, you know, and then, you know, uh, just some of the strange things that would happen to me when I would get high. You know what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. was just awful. And I just didn't want to live like that anymore. But I thank God that he pointed me in the direction that I needed to go in. And, you know, even when I got, went through treatment and, and went through counseling and 
started going to meetings, you know, because I went to meetings because I was used to going to church. Yeah. So I did everything they told me, 30 meetings in, you know, 90 meetings in 90 days, go to meetings every day, get a sponsor, get a counsel, work the steps. I have my NA book with me. Mm -hmm. I worked the steps. This was my other Bible until I could, I could get back into a church because church people snubbed me. And when I tried to talk to some people yeah. about my problem, I got brushed off. Now, I had some people that stuck with me and helped me, like my, my godmother here. Um, Put your hands together for yeah, our godmother. Yeah, Mama Ethel. She's been, a, she's been a godsend. When I call her my godmother, that's exactly what she is. She wasn't ordained my godmother as a child. God sent her to me. And she's been right there with me every step of the way. And, you know, I just, I just did this like I did church. You know, God knew what he was doing. I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, you know, and he just, he just got me where he knew he could give me some answers, yeah. you know, because I used to be that person. Why mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why I tried to make every session of that, because I used to ask God that. Why me? Why me? Why me? But I've learned about his sovereignty, mm -hmm. you know, um, through the things that I've been through, you know. Um, and I just, I just had to continue to fight and contend because I started recognizing once I got the drugs out of my system, mm -hmm. and I started um, practicing the principles of the Bible, because mm -hmm. that's what they are, mm -hmm. and doing some of those things for myself clear-headed, mm -hmm. I started setting boundaries, and I started doing things Come on, let's talk to about those boundaries. stay where I needed to stay. Well, first of all, I started paying more attention to myself than other people. That was one of the first things that I did. The second thing was I had to start making decisions about where I was going and who I was going with. And even in NA, even in the church, I had to start making better choices about who I was around and what I had and what they had. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It had to be a little more balanced, you know, whereas before I just went along with the crowd because that's what I did. And you got to remember the the most part of my adult life, pimps, prostitutes, drug users, that's who I was. That's mm -hmm. how I lived. Party, 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 drugs, drugs, drugs. I did all of that mm -hmm. with a little girl in tow. Mm -hmm. And I had to apologize. That was the first amend that I made after I made it to my mother. I had to make an amend to my daughter because I drug my daughter through that, you know. and. I started learning to make those amends, receive forgiveness, forgive myself. Mm -hmm. That was the biggie, mm -hmm. to forgive myself. I, I, you know, I could forgive other people, you know, but myself, and just keep it moving and try to do better. I, you know, even now, I try to make changes. I, I assess my, my actions every single day. Mm -hmm. I do. I take time to think about my day. Mm -hmm. I think time, I take time to bring that to God, even throughout the day. If I'm confronted with somebody that's mean, because see, my mother was, she was a good person, but my mother had a mean spirit. Mm -hmm. And that meanness, it strikes me. Mean Christians, I ran into mean Christians that would just take the word and just beat me up with the word. So I don't, when I see that coming, I just, I remove myself from that. You know, when I came to this church, I was still smoking. I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Because I knew that that was another thing that was going into my temple that God was not pleased with. See, my heart has changed. My heart is, is with pleasing God now, not people. And once God delivered me from that, mm. I've become a different person. Mm -hmm. I really have. And I endeavor to take that inventory every day mm -hmm. and think about my day, ask God to forgive me, ask him to help me to forgive myself and to face the next day. Because one thing N.A. taught me is one day at a time. And the Bible tells us mm -hmm. that in Matthew. Mm -hmm. Take no thought. For tomorrow. For tomorrow. You know. 
And that's what I do. I try to stay in the day. Sometimes I get way out there and I say, oh, okay, Holy Spirit. And another thing I do, develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Do not take that lightly. He is our God. He is our comforter. He is everything in us that we need to be like him. You know, he is. And, and once God got that established and I started cleaning up that temple, my temple, and getting all that junk out, then he could do the work in my heart. Now, you're telling me you were cleaning it up. You know, you know. You were cleaning up your temple. You know, when I was saying, yeah, when I was cleaning up my temple by not putting that stuff in Everybody there. Everybody here, you right here? Yeah. She was, now we say, God, take out of me. Mm. Whatever, not, and, I, and I pray that, and I, and I probably will pray that in the future. But what I'm saying is, you have to make the choice. Right, right. It's like, would you expect to walk into your house? And then see your house is a mess and say, God. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Take anything out of here. Right. Right. That is now you would you would you you would be messed up if you saw the trash bag itself up mm -hmm. and float through your house mm -hmm. out the front door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to go back in there. Mm -hmm. Which means that you have to be the one right. to bag that up, right? right? Mm -hmm. Take it out the front door because it, the trash doesn't belong inside your house. Yeah. Smelling up the house. Anybody ever come home and you smell trash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready for this? You ever ask God to come into your life? Hmm. <laughs> he gets to the door of your temple. <laughs> Open it up. Mm. Mm. And he scrunch up his nose. Mm. But God loves you so much for walking there anyway. Yeah, he will. He will. He will. Walking there anyway. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But we have to make the choice to, we to have clean to it up. We have to make the choice. We have to make the choice and we have to do the work. And the only way we can do the work is, like I said, cultivate that relationship for me. Cultivate that relationship with the Holy Spirit. What does that, what does that look like? That looks like renewing your mind with the Word. Mm -hmm. You know, getting in that Word, studying that Word, not just reading it so you can spout Christian scriptures to make yourself look good. I mean, actually, because what I learned is, I had so much word in me that I was just obese on word, and the word wasn't doing me any good. Now, that's what I learned about myself. Said obese on, on the, the word. word. Yes, that's where I was. Scripture says by now you ought to be teachers. There you go. And that is another thing. God told me after, after I went through what I went through, I had a supernatural experience, and God told me that my office in the five-fold ministry is teaching. Mm -hmm. So that gave me another responsibility. Okay, you need to get this together. And then health scares, you know. I had to deal with the consequences of that living with health issues. I'm a cancer survivor. You know, I just recently went through a major surgery for some arteries and some heart issues. I mean, God has delivered me. And I mean, you know, I am so grateful to God that I, the life that I lived unsaved and saved in a backslidden state, I should have had HIV. I should have had all, any, everything that was out there. But God kept me, y'all. How can you not serve a God like that? How can you not? How can you not? You know, so that's why you see me on my knees and raising my hands and just doing my radical praise because I don't just do it in here. I do it at home. God is good. He is good. Mm -hmm. He is good. You know, I, I, you know, he is just good. Mm -hmm. He is just good. Mm -hmm. He is just good. And, you know, the accomplishments that I have made um, since, you know, since I he picked me up and cleaned me up and set me 
where I needed to be and I was willing to go. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm not perfect. I've still made some mistakes and I've still done some things, but you know, I graduated from uh, Morton Conquerors College. I have a two year associate's degree in ministry. And I did that on just a job where I was an intake person at a school. But I was determined. God called me to that, and I was determined to do it. Mm -hmm. I was able to lead my, my mother to the Lord. She got saved before she passed away. My father was saved before he passed away. My daughter was in the street, and she got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest of my family is coming in in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because I'm going to please God. And God's going to do what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do it anyway. But I want to cooperate with him. You know, Amen. I want to be a living example for them babies. Yeah. Them babies. Yeah. I got some babies, a bunch of them. I got, I'm like a uh, dude that had the 12 tribes of Israel so far. <laughs> 12 great grandbabies. I mean, that's, that's weighty. Yeah. If we don't do it for... I mean, you know, we need to do it for God, but we need to think about the generations, yeah. the generations of people. You know, I sit back and look, you know, for a long time, the devil just had me focused on the mistakes and, and, and all that I could only see through my mistakes. But now I'm looking through the Holy Ghost lens, and I can see what God would do through them because of what I've been through, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, if I just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. Just tell mm -hmm. the truth. And I'm not ashamed. And I'm not afraid. You know, um, I, just, I was working with Miss Sharon at, over at the Dove's Nest with the ladies. And yeah. after we finished one day, it just, the Holy Spirit just came over me and I jumped up and shouted. And this is what I was shouting. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. And I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm free from fear. Mm -hmm. I'm free from shame. I'm free. Yeah. Who the sun sets free, he is free. <laughs> Somebody bless the Lord right now. Who the sun sets free is free. Now, now here's here's how we're gonna wrap this up because I feel like we, I could I, we could talk for another hour or two. Um, but everybody, I ho hope you're ready. We're gonna dive a little pretty deep here and then we're going to come back up to the service real quick one of when we went to uh to visit with you and, and chatted with you and 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 talk with that we, the thing is when we went there we didn't go for this we just wanted to come check on you right and uh you said something to me that really struck me mm -hmm. and that was that you know how dark the dark is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know how dark the dark is. Mm -hmm. Ex explain that. Okay. The best way I can explain that was before I was saved, I was in the dark, but I didn't know I was in the dark. Okay? Mm -hmm. It was darkness. But once I went back to the dark after being saved, and I was void of hope, I was desperate, I was destitute, I was spiritually bankrupt. And that's when I knew how dark the, the dark was because I had seen the marvelous light of Jesus. I had seen the light. He had shed the light on the darkness. But then I found myself in the dark, but that dark was a different dark. Mm -hmm. It was a dark filled with hopelessness and despair and discouragement. And I was shrouded, not just covered, but shrouded in guilt and shame. You, you said something Thursday night about when you gave reference to um, how Peter must have felt when he denied Jesus. Mm. That's the dark. Mm. 
I could, that's when you said that, can you imagine how, that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I had denied Christ and there was no way out. What am I going to do now? I was desperate. I was just shrouded mm -hmm. in that darkness. So that's what I meant by that when I mm -hmm. say I know how dark the dark is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had, I had gone back to the darkness, you know, because that's why I tell people God will not override your will. And that permissive will, that's a dangerous place to be with God. Hear me? It's a dangerous place. You want to be in his perfect will. You know, not that permissive will. That's, that's, that permissive will. Don't let the devil trick you into that. It's not a good place to be. It's not. It's a, it's a bad place to be. And before you know it, the enemy will snatch the rug out of you, out from under you, and you, you can't see. I couldn't see anything in that darkness. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't read the Bible. I couldn't pray in tongues. I couldn't cry. And I'm a crybaby. And I knew I was in trouble when I couldn't cry, mm -hmm. you know. And I was just shrouded mm -hmm. by that darkness, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, completely covered in it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that was the thing that, that led me to the suicide attempt, mm -hmm. you know. But I look back at it now, and yeah. that, was, that was the surrender God wanted from me. I, I don't recommend suicide to anybody. That's not what I'm doing. But what I'm saying is when people are hurting and people say things, because there's hints that people give. I gave a lot of hints. And I even said some things to some people. And they just shrugged me off. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Pray with them. Let them talk. Sometimes you just want somebody to listen to you. I know that's what it was for me. You know, I just wanted you weren't to looking talk. for anybody to fix it. Right. You, I you just needed, needed to, to talk. To I just needed somebody to hear me, to hear what I was saying. I always felt like I was never heard, even from a little child. I always felt like nobody heard me, mm -hmm. except the pimps, the prostitutes. And then when I went to NA, mm -hmm. you know, and today, <laughs> <laughs> today. Amen. I feel like those that have ears to hear are hearing me today, you know, and that's, that's my prayer, Amen. you know, with this testimony. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Put your hands together one more time for Miss Constance. I'm going to ask that everybody stand. Everybody stand right where you are. Wasn't this good? In Revelation, Revelation 19, it says again, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I'm hoping that you heard in our short conversation, it was shorter than the first one, <laughs> you heard something that you can take with you to help you or maybe to help a loved one or maybe just listen to this, you know, I need to make some changes, some things I need to do different. What I like to do in this, in this moment is if you know that you need help in any one of the areas that she's talking about or in any area at, at all, you need someone to touch and agree with you in the thing that it is that you know you need to be delivered from. I'm going to ask you to be honest, open-minded, and willing. To walk right up here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And be willing to let somebody pray for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your honesty about your situation. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. No form or fashion needed. Just walk right up here right now. And as you're walking, somebody's gonna meet with you. They'll grab hands with you. Come on, prayer team. It's Deliverance Day. It's Coming Out Day. While I'm still talking, I just want you to shake hands with somebody, grab hands with 
someone that you know, you know what, I, I, I'm going through this. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You got to be honest. Here we go. Here's, here's Belize. He's free. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask this also. Right now with your family members, your friends that you're sitting with, whoever it is, I'm going to ask you to do something. Could you grab hands with them? Could you hold a hand? If you don't know them, just, you know, introduce yourself. It may be that you're not ready to be completely honest with them or tell them all your deepest, darkest secrets. But it may be that you're able to tell them that you are going through something. I'm going to ask that you turn to that person right now. Can you do that? I see everybody kind of holding hands in a chain, but I want you to turn to that person right now. If you're a family of people, just gather your family together. Amen. People up here, they're getting delivered. Amen. They're getting delivered. But I want you just to turn to that loved one, turn to that friend, turn to that person you just met. Let them cry if they need to cry. Speak to them. If you can be honest, be honest and tell them what it is that you're going through. I'm going to ask as you hear it, don't judge them. And just pray for them. Thank God for them. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Ask the fathers to pray over your family. Mothers, pray over your family. Just take some moments right now and just thank God. Thank God for your family. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God that hope is restored again. Thank God that love is restored again. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's be the church right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Talk to him about how you made it through. But what God has done in your family is going to do in your family. Thank you, Jesus. We'll speak the truth and love to each other. Right, let's pray Lord right now in the name of Jesus I thank you for your spirit I thank you for your anointing Lord we thank you for using Miss Constance to speak to us to speak to deep places in us Lord Lord we know that you have power to deliver you have power to set free so we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you are set free, that you are set each family free, Lord, that you are set each father free, that you are set each mother free, Lord, set their children free, Lord, set every man, every woman, every child. We thank you, Lord, for freedom right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives, that you've just been building a testimony, Lord. Lord, so that when they share it with somebody else, it will bring them out too, Lord. One after another, Lord, bring us out, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have placed us, Lord, on the road.
that leads to you, Lord, that you place us on a path, Lord, that leads to freedom, Lord. That we thank you, Lord, for every chain falling off of us right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for breakthrough, Lord, and deliverance, Lord. We ask you right now to allow us to be honest with ourselves. Honest with ourselves as you're shining light on our lives, Lord. We thank you that we wouldn't turn from the light, Lord, but we would look up at you, Lord, knowing, Lord, that we could cast all our cares on you because you care for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that we'd be honest, Lord, open-minded, Lord. Our spirit will be open to you, Lord, and to you only, Lord, to speak to us and comfort us, Lord. Lord, and to help us to do what it is that you called us to do. Lord, you've been so precious to us and precious in our lives, Lord. So we ask you right now to allow us to be precious to ourselves as well, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the strength that you place in people around us, Lord, to speak to us. Lord, to hold our hand through things, Lord to help us and pray with us as we're going through these things, Lord. Lord, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Continue to strengthen them, Lord. Continue to empower them, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you would continue to comfort them, Lord. Lord, as they comfort others, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that one in the family, Lord, that the family turns to when they're in trouble. Lord, I ask you right now to bless that family member that they will continue to do what it is that you've called them to do, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless you right now. Lord, I ask you now, Lord, as we get ready to leave this place, bless every family, Lord. Bless every household. Bless their dwelling right now. I thank you that they will go through that dwelling, Lord making it a place for you, Lord, making it a dwelling place for you, Lord. Lord, and as they're doing that, Lord, even in themselves, we thank you right now that we are dusting, Lord, the furniture. Lord, that we're vacuuming, Lord, that we're cleaning our vessel, Lord, that is worthy, Lord, that is ready to receive the master of the temple. Lord, we thank you right now. Give us strength, Lord. Give us wisdom. Give us eyes that see, Lord ears that hear and a heart that understands what the Spirit is saying to the church, Lord. Lord, and we ask you to do this, Lord, specifically. Help us to be your church. Help us to be your church, Lord. Help us to be the balm of Gilead for a, he for a, a nation that needs healing. Help us, Lord, to be a, a comforting, Lord, for people who are coming through the doors hurting. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, that we will put down that judgmental spirit that backbiting spirit or whatever it is that we wouldn't gossip about our brother and sister we would pray for our brother and sister that we would encourage our brother and sister that we wouldn't beat them up with the word Lord, but we would speak the truth in love in love Lord give us the courage to do it give us bravery to do it Lord and we'll be forever grateful for it Lord in Jesus name